abductions, even though uh, they're uh, done in a, in a, in a you know, objective but uh, you know, biological way, like we dissect frogs, um, maybe, uh, maybe they're, they're doing it you know, just for fun and for sport. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I, th I think probably that, uh, uh, that the fear uh, could, be, could be justified in some senses, and Druffel. Uh, has written this book about how to uh, prevent being abducted. And you know, really think, even, even if benevolent species coming to this planet and taking a man and a woman and taking ova out of a woman and sperm out of a man, that's tremendously invasive uh, and very traumatic for the human beings. Um, so in, even if the motives are good, you know, the, these, these, these actions are, are as violent as... Uh, as, as anyone we're cap capable of on, on the planet. Um, I think that a certain amount of fear is, is justified. If you look at Day the Earth Stood Still, uh, you know, the first thing that, uh, that happens is the army is assembled and, you know, guns are shot at, the, at, these, at these beings and at the ship. Cheney, because I say the most important question to put to any high-ranking official is not what do you think about UFOs or have you seen one, the, the more, most important question is have you ever been briefed on the subject? Did someone walk in your office and tell you what's going on? Because if someone walks into the president's office or some high-ranking official and briefs him on the subject of UFOs, it is for real. It's not imaginary as the government has been saying for 60 years. So I asked uh, Mr. Cheney, this is three months after he became the vice president, I asked him on the air, and this is still on Diane Reem's archives, Mr. Cheney, and all your jobs in government, have you ever been briefed on the subject of UFOs? And if so, when was it and what were you told? And Mr. Cheney said, if I had been briefed on that subject, it probably would have been classified and I wouldn't be talking about it. January 22nd, 1997, I noticed three amber orbs now at a distance far west on the horizon. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, even though they're in a line formation, they were amber, they were in a formation, they were hovering for minutes. And as I'm pointing like this, they reappear in the same spot. And I thought, I have to get a picture of this. And I ran upstairs, I grabbed my 35 millimeter, get out onto the balcony. As I'm ready to shoot the three bottom orbs, suddenly six amber orbs in a row, totally equidistant from each other, massive span across, pop up. On March 13, 1997, over 10,000 Arizona residents witnessed the single most spectacular UFO sighting in the 20th century. Headlines surged the nation and Arizona residents demanded answers from military and state officials. A mile-wide UFO was seen from as far north as Flagstaff, Arizona, and then the giant triangular UFO hovered above the great city of Phoenix, Arizona, where Dr. Lynn Kitai shot this amazing videotape. When we go out into space and we're exploring the cosmos out there and we're looking for signs of extraterrestrial life, what kind of a, of a uh, communication are we going to send out? I mean, if Dan Aykroyd was the ambassador, if you were the ambassador for Earth, what message would you teletype to E.T.? If I were to speak for mankind to these beings that were, were coming here, um, <clears throat> I guess what I would say is, you know, let's go to some neutral place. Um, let's have a meeting with scientists from all around the world, world leaders. Let's sit down and, 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 and basically have a sort of a forum with, with you, the, the extraterrestrial or extra dimensional beings. Let's, let, let's sit down and, and kind of get to know each other. And, um, you know, human instinct is pretty good. And I think, uh, 
you know, it's, it would almost like be a sort of a G8 style kind of summit with world leaders, scientific leaders, and these these beings. And you'd sit down with them, and you know, after about a week, uh, or even a couple of days, or maybe a few hours, you would really sort of get a sense of what of what they're up to. But of course, you know, childhood's end. Arthur C. Clarke's great story. Uh, it looked like these beings were were benevolent, even though they had an, a malevolent appearance. And in the end, we find out that they they meant no good for our for our planet. So, I, you know, I mean, I think it's important that uh, some branches of the military and police uh, be be briefed on these uh, uh, in in a very real sense and be told, you know, they are real. People are being abducted. There is mind control in play here, and that we do have to be vigilant now. If we knew that there was a purely benevolent race, like if uh, something happened in Iraq where all of the electronics went out in the American military and uh, all of the insurgents' uh, rifles jammed, uh, or uh, we saw all of the uh, polluted uh, waters in North Carolina from the pig farming completely healed overnight, and different signs like this, then we would know we're dealing with a benevolent species and then we could really be open and welcome. Uh, but then again, we would have to be cautious because beings with that much power could give the impression that they're here to help when really they're not. So the verdict is out on all this. We, we just don't know which ones are benevolent, which are, ones are malevolent, and the degree to which uh, they're going to continue um, interacting with our planet. But what would really help is if the United States military and police and government o open it up to their staffs and say, Look, this is something we really do have to consider uh, because, you know, maybe the defense, the survival of our species could, could well be at stake. If you look at the history, you know, from, say, Ken Arnold's first sighting in 47, going back to the Bible, Ezekiel's wheel, going back to the medieval manifestations of little saucers and, and, and UFOs, that painting of the Madonna that's very famous uh, in which it appears, up to now, um, there has been no, there have been no mass murders by these, these beings, there's been no mass destruction of cities, but hundreds of thousands of people have been taken out of their lives, subjected to surgical um, uh, experimentation, released back into the population and are suffering trauma today for it. That is, is not good. The idea, I mean, like in the movie uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, the meeting on the dark side of the moon in Devil's Tower, Wyoming, I mean, it seems like the logical thing to do. I mean, we, we, uh, we have a communication, a teletype message, we have a place, a location, and a time, and we isolate it from the public until we know it's safe. I mean, we, we check each other out. I mean, this seems like the most logical thing to do, you know, even rather than meeting on the White House lawn. I mean, this is the way we would like it to happen. But that doesn't seem to be the way it's really happening. I mean, these extraterrestrials don't seem to be so interested in doing things politically the way we do things on Earth. They're picking certain individuals to contact. They are uh, zeroing in on those individuals. But now, I mean, there are so many sightings going on all over the planet. I mean, uh, it's just amazing. I mean, Iran, Turkey, Mexico, uh, Venice, California, um, Sonora, California, Texas, Death Valley. I mean, the reports are coming in every other day now. Um, it seems like we're heading towards an omega point. I mean, uh, what is about to happen? I mean, is this, is this all just a coincidence that, that more and more people have video cameras? Or do you really think, you know, there's a, a major unprecedented uh, communication that is about to happen between our extraterrestrial visitors and humanity? Or again, is it, is it the video camera question? More, more camcorders? There are definitely more video cameras out there um, and uh, definitely more sightings and definitely more credible witnesses. You know, the biggest thing in ufology uh, in the 60s was uh, Herb Shermer, the Nebraska Highway Patrolman who was at the Ashland Oil uh, tank farm out there in, in Nebraska. And he writes in his diary, you know, saw flying saucer and then under hypnosis, Turned out that he was taken aboard and informed of their intentions. Barney and Betty Hill. I mean, these were the these were the key cases. Shermer, Bar Benny, and 
uh, Barney and Betty Hill, the Pascagoula incident, um, uh, Travis Walton. Um, now, there are hundreds of cases like this. And I think that because it's in the consciousness, because we have, you know, a, a poll saying basically half of the world believes and half doesn't, um, we, we are, we, we're reaching a point where, as, as Stephen Bassett talks about his, his time clock, it's like the nuclear time clock uh, that we had in the 50s before we blew the world, you know, before we blew the world up. The theory that once the hands got to midnight, that's when all the nuclear weapons in the world would be discharged. Well, we've stopped that nuclear cl clock, thank thankfully. But as far as the UFO clock, he says we're, we're one minute to midnight now. Uh, meaning that in, in a minute to midnight, something really, really spectacular is going to happen. Now, whether that's a mass uh, appearance, uh, whether that is, uh, you know, it come over to the Yankee Stadium during a game. I think the next, possibly the next, maybe even in the next five years, we're going to uh, have um, occasions uh, like the one I experienced in upstate New York in the mid-80s when I was, I woke up in the middle of the night and I said to my wife, they're calling me, they're calling me, I want to go outside, they want me to come outside and see. He said, who, 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 who? Something outside wants me to come out and say, oh, just go back to bed. I went back to bed, but in the next day in the media, in newspapers, in radio, all over upstate New York and Ontario and Quebec and Vermont, people spoke about this urge they had to go out of their houses at three in the morning and look up into the sky. And 12,000 people shared this urge. And they went out and it was a big, big news story. And of course the Air Force said that a Chinese rocket had exploded over New York State. And what people saw was a massive, miles high pink spiral in the sky above the Great Lakes. Um, in Hull, Quebec, Canada, uh, a few years afterwards, uh, there was a story of several hundred people, almost a thousand people, in this uh, community, Gatineau, uh, north of Hull, Quebec, Canada, in the, in the Quebec province, sharing this urge to come outside and look up into the sky, and they also saw an apparition. So there are going to be more of these uh, these mass sightings and um, you know the day that a million people in Idaho at a rock concert or or something see it that is when you're going to really get the conventional uh, military uh, and police sitting down to say well it's time to throw the Brook Brookings Institution report out and uh, and lay it open to the people and let the people decide you know what must be done in, in conference with 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 our state leaders